Welcome to the World History One Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10 second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in five seconds. Welcome to World History One Lecture 1.5 on the land before history. And here is a picture of all of human history. We have Ugg the Caveman, and he looks puzzled looking at a laptop computer. Well, something else is going on here. Let's talk about that laptop for a second. You see, we know that laptops were created in 1985. We also know that laptops were first mass marketed in 1995. We even know that the first widely available laptop was the Toshiba 1100. But when it comes to Ugg, we lose that certainty. We can only guess about how early humans like Ugg lived. We can only guess about how early humans like Ugg learned and evolved. But we don't know for certain a lot about prehistoric humans. We are going to start looking at our history. But we need to understand that there are things that we know for sure and things that we are not entirely certain about. With that said, go to the next slide. So when can we be certain about a historical event versus when we have to take an educated guess about what happened? Well, it all depends if the event happened in prehistory or history. You see, we find stuff about our past all the time. We find it in the ground, we find it under our beds, we find it in tombs. But there's a point in time where it becomes impossible to put an exact date on an object from our past. And that point defines the difference between prehistory and history. The time before written records is prehistory, which is any date before 4000 to 3300 BCE. You see, there's no way for us to tell for sure what exactly happened prior to this time because no one wrote anything down about what happened. Humans start to write and record our history sometime after 4000 to 3300 BCE. Now we have a better or even an exact understanding of our past because we can read about it. Go ahead to the next slide. Because of this prehistory versus history problem, scientists created other ways to date the age of an object. So we can generally date objects without using a written record. One way we do this is with radiocarbon dating. Radiocarbon dating is used to date objects that once lived. I'm talking about like bones, cotton fibers, wood-based paper, things like that, which are less than 50,000 years old. This process measures the amount of carbon in an object compared to how long it takes for all the carbon to completely disappear from an object. The other thing we use are representative sites. Representative sites allow us to look at an object and compare it to other objects found at a historical site. For example, I've got Stonehenge there. Well, is the object from a place that we already know about in history? Did we find the same or similar objects at Stonehenge that we might have found someplace else? Or does it look like stuff from a point in history where we found other stuff? Both of these tools can be used to date objects, whether they're from prehistory or from history. Go to the next slide. So what do we know about prehistoric man using tools like radiocarbon dating and representative sites? Well, we happen to know a lot. Let's start with humans from the Paleolithic era. We know them as cavemen. Now, before the Geico caveman, we had these folks, the Flintstones. Quick review. Look at the picture of the Flintstones and you tell me what's wrong with this picture. Well, yeah, a lot of things are wrong, but the biggest problem is 
Barney. You see, Barney's a dinosaur, and we know that dinosaurs did not live with humans. Let's talk about Paleolithic humans. They overcome their physical limitations by using their intelligence. Humans do not wear armor. Humans do not have claws. But we use our brains to change the environment around us, to survive, and to ultimately thrive. We also know that Paleolithic humans had the following characteristics. They lived in clans, which are close-knit, interrelated families. They were nomadic. They moved around. They developed an oral language. They talked to each other. They created cave art, like the art you see right there. They used fire, and they even developed simple tools. Go ahead to the next slide. Now that we've looked at humans from the Paleolithic era, let's look at humans from the Neolithic era. No, not that Neo. Let's talk about Neolithic humans. They're going to advance rapidly and they're going to bring us to the doorstep of civilization. From 10,000 BCE to 3300 BCE, humans are going to evolve quickly and they're going to get smarter and one of the things they're going to come up with is the agricultural revolution which is going to allow humans to settle in communities and change the land and animals to their advantage what do i mean well neolithic humans had the following characteristics and if you can look at the picture there you'll see some of these characteristics in action Neolithic humans, they planted seeds and they harvested or picked their crops. They're going to build shelters instead of living in caves. They're going to domesticate or tame the animals for their use. No longer are they going to roam the countryside looking for things to eat. Instead, they're going to keep the ox in their communities and the ox is going to help them plow. The sheep will stay in their communities and they will shear the sheep or take off the sheep's wool and use it for clothing. They're going to invent the pottery wheel, and this is going to allow them to store things in containers. They're going to weave the cloth into clothes, and they're going to use advanced tools and animal drawing carts to make life easier. Neolithic humans will bring us right up to the beginnings of civilization. Go ahead to the next slide. Now that we've learned two million years of human history, let's take this last opportunity to sort out all of these events chronologically or in order of date. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to talk about the Paleolithic and Neolithic eras, but we're going to break it down just a little bit more. The early Paleolithic era is 2 million BCE to 400,000 BCE, and that is when our distant cousins roam the Earth. The late Paleolithic era is 400,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE. That is when early humans, Homo sapiens, show up. The Neolithic era is 10,000 BCE to 3,300 BCE. That's the agricultural revolution, and we are on the doorstep of civilization. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.